So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. <laughs> this is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview, broadcast and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League Baseball, capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. I thought long and hard about how to introduce this special program celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Acme Comedy Theater. I thought about how, in modern times, a lot of great comedy has come from Los Angeles, where Acme is based. Charlie Chaplin, for instance. Ronald Reagan. Pauly Shore. And then I thought, maybe I should leave the funny stuff up to the comics from Acme. So I'm going to shut up and explain the format of this show. Joining us first will be Dan Kane, the longtime owner of the theater. He'll then be joined by the theater's founder and director, Travis Oates, who will be followed in succession by performers Julie Whitner, Kevin Small, Jen Parker, Rich Keith, and Claudia Dolph. Now, before I bring, up, bring Dan on, let me tell you that the Acme Comedy Theater is located at 135 La Brea Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90036. And for tickets and show information and anything we don't manage to cover here in the next 60 minutes, go to www.acmecomedy.com. That said, Dan Kane, welcome to Mr. Media. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having us today. We appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Congratulations on 20 years. Well, thank you. Uh, it, it's been a great time, although uh, not all of us have been here all 20 of those years. But uh, I think, uh, you know, Acme is uh, about as responsible as any 20-year-old at this point. So, uh, you know, we're pretty happy about that. <laughs> oh, don't say that. That's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to behave ourselves, but, uh, you know, it, it's our job to not do that all the time as well. Oh, man. Well, uh, tell folks a little about how you got involved with Acme and, and why you've stuck around so long. Well, I started uh, visiting the Acme Theater as, a, uh, as an audience member um, uh, some number of years ago in the uh, early uh, 2000s, I guess we'd call it now, and uh, really just uh, uh, loved the performances. Uh, uh, sketch comedy was... Uh, the, the primary offering at that time, and then improv comedy came along uh, shortly thereafter, and uh, and so I decided that uh, I would like to do that too, and, and that's the experience a lot of folks have. And so, uh, like like a lot of other folks, I enrolled in the classes in both the uh, improv and sketch program, and worked my way up through the various classes, and uh, eventually got invited to join the uh, performance companies, and uh, and then partnered with uh, the previous owner who you mentioned, Travis Oates. He and I were uh, co-owners for a time, uh, and we did some uh, some updates and changes to the theater. And then I became uh, the sole owner here uh, not that long ago. But, of course, uh, Travis, who we'll be talking to shortly, is still very much involved, and he is the uh, uh, regular director of our Acme This Week show. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, history in that uh, Travis was, was there, uh, I guess as a founder, right, and as an owner with you, and now you're the owner and he's the uh, uh, director. Is that Does that work for you guys? I guess it must. We've had a couple of transitions. Uh, actually, the original founder was um, uh, M.D. Sweeney, and uh, that was back in 1989. And Travis joined the group uh, in the uh, early to mid-'90s. He'll have to date himself. Oh. But, uh, and so uh, he actually became the second owner. Um, in uh, about 2004, and then uh, I became the current owner in uh, 2008. So, uh, you know, there's only been uh, three owners in its 20-year history, but all three of us uh, are still uh, very much in contact. And, in fact, the founder, M.D. Sweeney, owns the uh, the well-known Amalfi Restaurant, which is attached uh, next to the theater. And so uh, even he's around uh, uh, on the weekends and, and weeknights when we have our shows, and so it's very fun that you have pretty much uh, uh, all the folks involved in that history going all the, all the way back to day one still involved and still around there. Hmm. And my apologies to MD for uh, leaving him out of uh, mentioning about the founding. I, to be honest, I've got so many notes in front of me that I just I just missed that. But oh uh, no, no course... problem at all. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, there is uh, you know quite a few uh, uh, elements to that uh, that evolution, and uh, we're always happy to help uh, folks tell our story. But you know, uh, as proud as we are of that history and all the stuff that we've accomplished, we're even more excited about the things to come. And as we look forward, uh, uh, you know, we are continuing to get more and more great celebrity guest hosts to, uh, to come in and, and be part of our 
uh, main sketch show, Acme This Week, which is our Saturday night sketch show. It's a lot like Saturday Night Live, and uh, we're just having a, a blast with that and our great improv shows. And so, um, you know, this 20-year mark for us is a, a chance to look back and, and really be proud of what we've accomplished. It's also a chance for us to look forward and uh, hope we can uh, continue to uh, improve and, and bring great shows to audiences uh, for the next 20. Now, regular listeners to Mr. Media have probably noticed that pretty much every week uh, I have as a guest the guest host at Acme this week, the Saturday Night Show. Um, but uh, that's just a small part of what goes on at Acme. What are some of the other programs and, and uh, uh, performances? Acme This Week is one of six uh, performances that we do on a regular basis. We have three sketch companies and three improv companies. And uh, basically they are, uh, they are at uh, various levels. Uh, when you first go through our classes, um, when you complete the, the final level of the classes, you may be invited to join one of our companies, our performance companies, and that will be sort of the entry-level sketch or improv performance company. Once you've done that, and they perform at our, our late-night slots, usually at 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights, uh, then you work your way up through those companies. As you go through the process of doing more and more shows and getting more experience, you may be invited to join one of our middle-level companies. Um, and uh, uh, so, you know, our, our, our entry-level companies do an improv show called Scandal, which is our 11 o'clock Friday night show. It's a very fun soap opera-type format uh, where you'll watch the residents of Little Valley uh, uh, duke it out, you know, over sex, lies, and, and money. And um, meanwhile, our Charlie Company, which is our entry-level sketch company, does uh, their uh, sketch show on Saturday nights at 11 p.m. And um, then the middle-level companies uh, on the sketch side, uh, the Bravo Company does their show on Friday nights at 8 o'clock called Friday Night Live. And uh, it's a great, very funny sketch show. These are the folks that are working their way towards our top uh, sketch company for Acme this week. Meanwhile, our middle-level improv company, the Yankee Company, does a variety of different shows, also in that soap opera format, but they take you to various locations. So uh, they will take you to uh, a, a police department or a, uh, a TV station in the 80s or wherever it is that they happen to be set to, uh, to do their, uh, their weekly episodic uh, show. And then the top sketch company, uh, as we mentioned, is Acme this week, which does our celebrity-hosted show. Uh, that's Saturdays at 8 o'clock. Meanwhile, our top improv company is Fridays at 9 p.m., and they do a very specific genre-based uh, improvised soap opera show. Now, when we talk about the improvised soap opera, that's an eight-episode run with a story <laughs> arc that continues each week. And so they take you to more exotic places. Um, our first show this year was called, was called Kaminot. Uh, a little play on the word Camelot, and uh, the <laughs> folks of Camelot were, of course, in medieval times. It was a musical, and uh, and the craziness went from there. And then uh, the show that's running right now is called The Sword of the Cross, and this is based in uh, uh, times at the, the height of the Roman Empire, and you have uh, Romans and Christians uh, uh, vying for power and so on. Uh, and then the next show coming up will be a mob and gangster-based uh uh, genre type show and uh, so they're all very fun and they all take the viewers and the audience on a, a really interesting ride uh, and of course being all improvised you just never know what's going to happen hmm. and with the uh, the program of uh, classes and courses I guess if, if you're in LA and I hear there are a few people in LA who have showbiz aspirations I just something I pick up in the in the you know on the internet uh, yeah, in fact this even, would be a, uh, you could run into them on the street it's not that hard <laughs> I, I hear they're waiting a lot of tables, uh, th but, they, <laughs> but this is a this is a place where people could come in and get experience and 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 figure out if this is really you know what they're made of. Yeah, the Acme family is a very welcoming place, and uh, you know there are many places uh, around town, uh, both in this city and and others, obviously that offer improv and sketch courses. Um, some of them are more welcoming than others, and uh, we very much pride ourselves on being a place that welcomes uh, anyone who wants to give it a shot and uh, we will you know work them through the process let them uh, find out where their strengths are we have an excellent group of directors and instructors that will uh, uh, you know guide them through the process and as we like to say we will help you find your funny if it may have been lost or maybe you just misplaced it temporarily um, is is uh is there money to be made running a, a theater like this? You've got so many different uh, aspects of what you do. Um, 
theoretically, I, I suppose there is. Um, uh, while while people are finding their funny, I'm trying to find the uh, trying to find the revenue. Now, you know, it it, it is a challenge. Um, theater, I think, uh, across the country, always competes with uh, uh, more multimedia type uh, activities, whether it's uh, uh, movie theaters, uh, TV and film, and anything else. And of course, LA is very much a TV and film town. Uh, as opposed to say New York City, which is much more of a of a theater going uh, crowd, but um, uh, we have our niche and uh, we are blessed with great uh, audiences and great houses week after week because folks love to come and see what we do. But it certainly does have its challenges, and uh, you know I I don't think any of us are in this uh, process to uh, uh, you know do something that's highly lucrative. We're in it because we love it, and uh, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. Well, uh, Dan, I'm going to bring in uh, Travis Oates in just a second, but because this is a uh, program about comedy, I want to play. This is a, a very quick bit. This is uh, Robert Picardo, formerly of uh, one of the uh, Star Trek shows, and for, I think it's Voyager, Star Trek Voyager. Yes, he was the People holographic doctor on Voyager. There you go. And uh, this is just a quick bit called Ask Alfonso, and then we'll bring Travis in. Hello. Welcome to Ask Alfonso. I am Alfonso. Alma from Des Moines, Iowa writes, Dear Alfonso, all of my life I have been plagued by loneliness, fear, and bad penmanship, I would say. Is it possible that I could ever have a man like you make love to me? P.S. I have enclosed the picture. <laughs> well, Alma, everything in life is possible, but no. Travis Oates, welcome to Mr. Media. Uh, hello there. How you doing? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. I see uh, Dan was filling you in on the uh, financial uh, wonders of the theater world. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm actually posting uh, the uh, the 10K from uh, uh, the fourth quarter uh, for everyone to read uh, up on the web. So you can just find that at Mr. Yeah. You know, anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Dan, you running a theater is almost as lucrative as professional poetry or mime, so it's it's uh, <laughs> in my business. Travis, how uh, how did the uh, the Saturday night uh, the Acme this week with the guest host begin, and how has that developed since it started? Uh, it started about oh gosh, two and a half years ago now, I think. Uh, we had been doing the same thing that the Groundlings had been doing for years and pretty much every other sketch company in town has been doing for years, where we ran a show for a period between 8 and 16 weeks that was basically the same show, uh, 16 to 20 sketches that we had rehearsed ahead of time and, and put together a show much like a play. Uh, but the downside to doing that is we never were able to do updated bits about things that were happening in the news at the moment. Uh, so the guys uh, kept complaining about that, that they never got to write anything that was current. By the time they wrote it and it got on stage, it was about an eight to ten week lag. So I, I said, well, we could try this where we basically write a completely different show every week. And the idea was it would all be topical information, which is why originally it was called Acme This Week. It was what happened in the news that week. Uh, and it was without a celebrity host at first. We tried it for a 12-week run, and I absolutely loathed it, actually. I, it was an incredible amount of work for me as a director. Uh, and toward the end, I told everybody, this was a fun experiment, but I'm never going to do this again. Uh, I, I, I've wanted to kill myself the past four weeks because there's too much, too much stuff. And right at the very, very end, uh, Alex Borstein, who is one of our most famous alumni, uh, she agreed to come in and basically be a celebrity host for us uh, at the very, very last show of this run. That was so much fun. We had so much fun with a celebrity host. And the guys who did the original run the most fun they had ever had, ever, uh, doing sketch. And so fortunately, much like childbirth, after the run of the show, I had a few months, it was right before our winter break, 
to think about it and to forget how much work it was. And, uh, and when we came back uh, in the new year, I said, well, if we are going to do this, we'll do it with a celebrity host, different celebrity host every week. Uh, and I just started streamlining the process a little bit so it wasn't quite so much work for the director. Originally, I, I, was, I was pretty much busy the entire week doing something or other. Uh, and as we streamlined the process and got it working, I only work about four days out of the week. Uh, as the director, hmm. um, That's nice. I want to. Sorry, I, I want to welcome uh, Julie Whitner. I think to the to the to the uh, conversation. Julie, are you there? I am here. All right. Well, uh, Julie, uh, I want you to say hello and goodbye to Dan. We're going to let him go because we're going to uh, keep bringing people in. Uh, hello and goodbye uh, to Dan. Hey, Julie. <laughs> uh, looking forward to seeing you on the stage this weekend. So <laughs> enjoy. Have fun, uh-huh. and thanks, Bob, for the time. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate your time. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I, I was I was just gonna uh, actually ask you guys, um, and, and Julie, maybe you want to answer this. Uh, I spoke to uh, TV uh, TV judge Christina Perez this afternoon of uh, Christina's Court, and uh, of course she's going to be at Acme tomorrow night, uh, Saturday, April 11th at 8 p.m. And she said something interesting. She admitted that while she had lived in LA for many years. She was embarrassed to admit that she had never been to the theater before, and I, I think she compared it to living in New York City and never visiting the Statue of Liberty. Do you, do you think that's a, that's a that's that's pretty funny? Yeah. Well, it sounds like she's going to do well tomorrow night. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I do get that a lot too when I say I'm performing. People say, "Oh, I've never been there. It's right down the street from me." And um, we put up neon lights um, yesterday, so people should be able to find us easier. <laughs> okay. Um, Travis, tell us a little about Julie. What, is, what does she do best? What is her, you know, where does she fit into the, the, uh, the Acme company? Julie, Julie's been with Acme, what, about six years now, Julie? Six, seven years? Oh, my gosh, I think it's more like 10 or 15. <laughs> no, it's not 15. I can guarantee that. It's been, well, uh, it's, it's been almost 10 years. It's been nine years since I started classes there. Wow, that's, that's impre- that's, that, that just goes to show my age because I was, uh, I think I was, was I your first director or was I your second director? You were the, my, uh, Sweeney was the first director. I did a few shows with him and then you came on board as the director. Okay. Boy, that makes me feel old. Um, uh, Julie, Julie's a phenomenal talent. Uh, one of the things that we're blessed with at the Acme, uh, I think in comedy, comedy can be very misogynistic. Uh, uh, guys think that they do comedy better than women. And uh, if you get a bunch of comedians around, they will uh, joke in quotations that uh, women aren't that funny, that, that men are so much funnier than, uh, than women. Uh, I think at the Acme, we've spent the last 20 years proving that wrong. I, I always felt that we had probably the strongest uh, crop of women in sketch comedy in town. Uh, I've always been really proud about that, and Julie's just one in the long line uh, of Travis, women. Travis, how kind. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, and and joining, I'm sorry, joining us now also is Kevin Small of the company. Kevin, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, women aren't funny. <laughs> I gotta go, you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here to, to make sure we keep that myth rolling. I got it's really it's really tough actually. Uh, this week I'm the uh, I'm the only other female in the show this week, other than Christina, our guest host. And um, and I I it was fun at pitch night. You being the only female there, you have to really uh, take a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have to spread it around, is what you're saying. You you got to take it all yourself. <laughs> it's it's like you know it's funny. They all like to uh, like to find the uh, the one woman and, and tease her endlessly. But it's it's fun. It's all in fun. Well, certainly. I mean, we've seen uh, the, the stories out of uh, Saturday Night Live, and uh, I think when uh, what was that uh, NBC show a year or two ago about the uh, the Sunset stri- something 60s? Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, Bradley yeah, Whitford. The- Studio yeah. 60 on the Sunset Strip. That's it. You know, it was always the implication that the women had the hardest time on those shows. Even the fake, even the fake comedy show, uh, the women had the hardest time. 
Well, I think in general, in uh, comedy is all about uh, looking silly, stupid, awkward, or ugly most of the time. Uh, most of the time, when we make when we make fun of ourselves, we make fun of the other people. We're doing something along those lines, and I think society tells women the last thing you're supposed to do is look silly, awkward, stupid, or uh, ugly. And I think I think women. Uh, have a hard time doing that, and sometimes men have a hard time accepting them when they try to do that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I would not want to be a female comedian. That, that is a tough road. Uh, <laughs> you would be ugly. <laughs> I would be an incredibly ugly. I, I, I would make an incredibly ugly woman. That, that is for sure. Travis, I, oh. think, I think your comedy is very feminine, and I think you'd make a wonderful female well, thank comedian. Thank you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he totally slammed you. <laughs> Kevin, uh, do you have any favorite moments? And how long have you been uh, have you been at Acme? I should ask you that first. Uh, nine years, I guess. Hmm. And any favorite moments? Uh, the naked yeah. ones. Any of the times I was most naked. <laughs> which is uh, which is every couple weeks, actually. Well, if I if I do my writing right. <laughs> I <laughs> get naked a lot. Now I I've uh, I've been w- with it when it was uh, the Sweeney before Travis and then the transition with Travis and uh, I've got a lot of great memories. Roller skating is always fun. You know, if I'm going to be made fun of for only doing roller skating scenes, I better be able to skate well. So I do those. I okay, that was I, actually I, the I, first time I saw you on stage. You were on roller skates. That that's true. Then <laughs> that's all I write. <laughs> Kevin, I'm, I'm told that uh, when Tatiana Ali was in a couple weeks ago, that uh, you did a skit with uh, Claudia uh, where you were you were a doctor rapping about pap smears. Yes, it's very important to get that information out to the young young population, uh, and it was very factual. This. Oh well, I was going to ask you if you if you could recall a few lines of that for people who might have missed it. Um, <laughs> he couldn't during the show. Hey, watch out! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That happened? What? Um, so you're wondering why you're here. You're sexually active, so you need a pap smear. Um, oh, no, I forgot it. See, that's, that's why I need my the show you lost it. No, exactly. Um, let's see this. So we're also looking for HPVs, human papillomus virus, STD. Um, I don't remember anymore. The best thing to do <laughs> is to give all the setup lines, but none of the joke lines, because that makes scenes seem really funny. Sure. I didn't know there was a test. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, yeah, they should have prepared you for well, that. Well, what's funny is I'm actually sitting here in front of my Mac, and I'm just trying to pull it up real fast, and that's the easiest way to do it. Well, we can skip around for a minute. Let me ask Julie something, and you, you, let, me, you, you let me know if it comes back to you. No, no, Julie, I have a that's fine just, just waiting for him to pull this up. <laughs> 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 Julie, I, I have a pic. I have a picture of you uh, with a with a uh, leash on. Can you can you tell us a little about that moment? <laughs> That's Tuesday. Uh, I mean, there's been so many. I you probably have the one. That, am I dressed like a grandma, a little old lady? Um, no, I don't have it in front of me now. Oh, okay. I uh, I wrote a sketch where it was New Year's and and uh, I was a grandmother and my grandson had to spend New Year's visiting me and. He was very bored, and he kept leaving the room, and every time he left the room, uh, myself and my two little old lady friends would uh, get down and dirty with uh, some very sexy, raunchy songs. And um, that picture is actually the 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 down-the-hall neighbor, this little old man who comes in, and and we put on leashes, and he's rapping. And, yeah, that was fun. Can can, can I just comment on, 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 on Julie's writing for a moment? Uh, I love the fact that you said, I have a picture here where you're wearing a leash. And Julie had to think of what sketch was it that with a leash that she was wearing that that, that might have been. Uh, that there were so many leash sketches uh, in her past that she couldn't remember whether it was the old woman one, was it the one where it was just as a, as well, a Chinese leashes are girl, am I, am I wearing a tail, what, what was going on in it? We should write a scroll skating leash uh, sketch. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. And I'm ready now. If some people would like to learn about rap smears, I can give you exactly everything you need to know. <laughs> I would I would love to hear that. Yes. Okay, so you know, so you're wondering why you're here. You're sexually active, so you need a pap smear. We got some stirrups, so we got no horse. I lubricate my hands so they ain't so coarse. 
We'll scrape your cervix to look for cancer. A cotton swab will show us all the answers. To get inside, I use a speculum like a cold metal duck, but not much fun. That's that's the first set, you know, and that just kind of explains why you're there. And then who says a cold metal deep. duck isn't fun? Yeah, cold metal ducks aren't fun. That's how my wife described it. It's like a big cold metal duck mouth. All okay, about how no, you use it. Right? No douche tampons or vaginal creams will help make sure that your sample is clean. We're also looking for HPVs, human papilloma virus, STD. Boyfriends always have them erections. Make sure that you make them wear protection. Condoms are your best damn choice. There are many brands and some are moist. See, we're out to help and educate and give you options. Sure. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> I, I, and I, I appreciate the cold read. Thank you very much for that. That was good. No, thank you. <laughs> what um, um, uh, what do the two of you have uh, lined up for tomorrow night? Can you give us a hint of what you'll be uh, performing with uh, Christina? Uh, I am going to be really high on drugs because I had surgery this week. So I'm yeah, not Kevin's out this week. week. I'm in next week. Oh, I'm sorry. He's, he's in next week's show. But, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot with... Uh, 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 Percocet and Vicodin is going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. And you know what? Me too, but I am in the show. <laughs> yes. Any particular drugs you'll be doing uh, while, while in the show? <laughs> Whatever I can get my hands on. Let's see, we, we have one sketch where, um, am I allowed to give this away, Travis? Uh, are, you, are you going to give away the entire punchline of the sketch? Probably not. You can, you can describe the sketch. Oh, Okay, but uh, all right. Um, so one of the sketches. Uh, oh, I, you know what? I'll talk about my news piece. Um, I'm doing a news piece on designer organs. Designer organs. Uh, designer I, organs. I, 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 I suspect these are not uh, the kind with uh, keys. <laughs> uh, with it, 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 recently, scientific uh, discovery uh, has allowed them to grow organs in a lab. So Julie is doing a news piece on on designer organs, uh, but she mistakes the meaning of what a designer organ actually is. Uh, <laughs> and so thanks to Versace uh, and 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 the like, making the designer organs. Got it. <laughs> All right. Um, Travis, have, have have you had any people in the? Uh, in the main company uh, over the years who have been maybe a little sensitive about some of the more adult uh, humor that, that comes out of acne? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, um, you know, more in the past than these days. I mean, comedy kind of evolved over time, and I, and I think we're always trying to push the envelope a little bit, but not too much to discuss the audience. But uh, I know back in the day, there were a few people that that were, um, in fact, uh, there's there's one uh, woman who is still currently with the main company. I won't mention her name as to embarrass her, but I know she was very. Uh, she thought that some of the scenes were very sexist, and and uh, she was offended by a couple of the scenes back in the day. Uh, what's funny about that is just recently uh, she wrote a scene uh, where she was an old stripper, and I and I and I said to her, you remember back when we would do things that were much tamer than what you write right now? And, and uh, she would say, yeah, that was back when I, before I had three kids and I didn't like being objectified as a woman. So, uh, her uh, name I guess rhymes a, with Mooley Jitner. No, it's, <laughs> no, not, me. it's not Julie. Oh no, it's <laughs> not Julie. That. I have yeah, no problem done. doing things about. Yeah. <laughs> Julie, Julie has never, never balked at being objectified. She, she actually uh, rather uh, encouraged it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, I'm all for it myself. Um, well, uh, I'm going to uh, bring on our uh, our next uh, featured player, if I can say that. Um, and uh, so, I want to thank uh, um, I want to thank Julie Whitner and Kevin Small for joining us. And Absolutely, I'm thank you for having us. Thanks. My pleasure. I'm going to send you stage left, and uh, good luck and congratulations on all your good work. Thank you. I'll nice see you all tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Nice to hear you didn't die in surgery, Kevin. Man. Take yeah, still better, Kevin. Yeah. I'm stoned. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. And uh, now joining us now will be um, uh, Rich, Rich Keith and, I believe, uh, let's see, oops, 
uh, Rich Keith and uh, Jen Parker. Hi, you guys there? Hi. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. So I had to get rid of Julie and Kevin so you guys could talk freely about them. So go ahead. Uh, and I, I printed out four or five sketches that I'm going to read to you uh, coldly now during the interview process. <laughs> Yeah, and if you could, try, try not to do them with energy or any sense of comedic timing, because that's, that's all what, what we're all about. At the end. Just like I do in the show, Travis. Just like I do in the show. <laughs> Just like you do in the show. Uh, Rich has actually been uh, on, on Mr. Media with me a couple times when we've had uh, guest hosts, so welcome back. I think the last time you were here, uh, David Lawrence was uh, making comments about your, uh, your manhood, so uh, we won't be having him back. Um, yes, I, I believe he said uh, Rich is the gay one, right, was the way he introduced me. Yeah, I think ah, that's what he said. Yeah. You you want a but, moment of rebuttal before we move on? No, I'm good. I, I think my my life and my actions speak for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really defend okay, well, his assertion that you're gay, but they speak for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Jen, a minute ago, I was asking Julie about you know being a woman in the company. Has it? Are there are there ever times where you feel a little? Uh, singled out or that uh, you're not having quite the same ride that the men are? Uh, definitely, but in kind of a good way. Because it's so <laughs> few women that you have to often get cast as the hot chick and everyone likes that. And you <laughs> kind of, you get noticed more by the audience um, in a way, I think, because they don't have to distinguish which one you were as much. If it was a female on stage, it was probably you. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it have a different ride, but in a good way. And Rich, uh, you uh, you also write for the show, don't you? As well as perform. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, do you have any uh, uh, any favorite moments uh, over the years? Uh, anything that stands out? Uh, you know, especially for people. You know, and I'm trying to keep in mind people who may not have been to the theater yet, and I want, you know, when I ask you this, I want to kind of give them a taste of you know, what they'd see if they were to happen to show up, say, oh, I don't know, tomorrow night, for example. But, yeah. <laughs> um, I, think, I think my favorite show that I've still done so far was uh, Matthew Lillard from Scream and Scooby-Doo uh, came to host. And uh, it was just, it was packed, and it was, I think, one of the first shows where uh, I really felt coming out of it like I'd had, you know, a bunch of really strong pieces, and he was very, very funny. There was a sketch where he was supposed to have brought a prop gun on stage, and he totally didn't bring it on stage. And you could just see this like a panic on his face. And then, being such a strong performer, he immediately just used his hand as a gun, and it was hysterical. And then, so that night was sort of very much like that, sort of the spirit of Acme this week, which is, uh, you know, there's not a lot of rehearsal, but there's a lot of talent and a lot of heart, and uh, we all go out there and have a blast, and the audience does too. Um, and, and Jen, uh, a favorite guest host that you've worked with or favorites? Um, I, I, I really liked Jackson Davis. Tell me if <laughs> of course you did. Wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, and no, I'm not making a comment on his looks. No, I know, I know he's a, he's a good looking guy, but that's not why. He was just fun and, and kind of crazy. Um, my favorite show, though, was the one, I can't remember names and it's embarrassing, but Leo from Charmed was awesome. That was such Brian a great show for me. Brian Thank Kraft, you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got to do a lot of stupid sketches that night, and I had a really good time. So um, the hosts in general have been great because they're all really flexible. They're, they're used to working on the fly. They've used teleprompters before. I can't say I've had a, a bad host experience. It, it's funny that you like Jackson Davis. I would say one of my favorite hosts was, was Jackson Pollock. When he was in there, he was hilarious. <laughs> For, 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 uh, yeah, for a dead painter, I have to tell you, he was amazing. Good for him. <laughs> I knew he could do it. Oh, oh man. Oh, there's a reference that probably flew over a few heads. Um, well, <laughs> everybody. That's that's what I do comedically. <laughs> <laughs> that's your stick. I, 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 when, when I was a freshman in college, University of Miami, the uh, the director of the communication school said to me, I worked in the office there, student, you know, student job, and one day she said to me, you know, Bob, you remind me a great deal of Jackson Pollock, and I just thought, okay, <laughs> I thought, is this a test, because I honestly don't know who Jackson Pollock is right now, but then, of course, I had to go and find out, and then, I'm st- I, you know, 30 years later, 
sadly, it's 30 years later. I'm still not sure if that was a compliment or I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know which one I thought the you were most? painting the wall at the time. <laughs> <laughs> the one I've gotten the most is that I yeah. remind people of not Molly Shannon, but her character Mary Catherine Gallagher, which is the one who puts her fingers in her armpits and then smells them. I've had at least five people tell me that I actually remind them of that character, which is <laughs> definitely an insult, but I was so happy. It's just because you're the smelly girl, Jen. <laughs> Thanks for it. You're welcome. Yeah, I was going to go out on a limb with you there and say that was probably not a compliment. Probably not. <laughs> but I think that's what I wanted. Um, uh, what, what, what similarities do you guys see um, – uh, between what you do and say uh, SNL, which of course tapes uh, uh, on the East Coast, and Mad TV, which is on the West Coast, uh, I don't know, you know, if you if you feel comfortable discussing that. But um, is this really an opportunity for people to, to come in week to week and see a live comedy show in kind of that same mode that they're familiar with seeing on TV, or is it or is it more different from that? I I think that uh, we do give kind of a live version of Saturday Night Live, not that Saturday Night Live isn't live since it's in the title. Uh, but I, I do think that we give that feel. Uh, our sketches are probably a little tighter, uh, and they're also a little bit, um, I think there's a little bit more energy going on there because we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants. We don't have a lot of uh, money and a lot of rehearsal time throughout the week. Uh, so I think what you're seeing maybe is a little bit more raw. Um, I also think that, uh, look, Saturday Night Live and Mad TV both have long and wonderful traditions. Uh, They produce a lot of amazing people. But, uh, you know, sometimes they get a little uh, stale. I think think Saturday Night Live is is there now. It it waxes and wanes with with its cast. Um, I think think Saturday Night Live is, is having... Uh, having come off that that big year that they had politically this this season right now, it's it's uh, okay. I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to insult them too much, or else uh, um, uh, I'll get uh, like a comedic head in the mail or something. Uh, I don't know. That would be a funny animal, a hy- hyena in my bed or something. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I, it was certainly a shorter show than Saturday Night Live. Let me put that. Way. I was thinking maybe you'd wake up with Rob Schneider's head in your bed, something like that. It, well, it, we could only hope. That'd be a mixed thing <laughs> right there, wouldn't it? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, too, uh, another difference between us and SNL is we, we really do have, whoever's directing the show really does have the freedom to exercise their creative vision for that week's show. You don't have network and advertising and censors. I mean, we've had full nudity on our show. Saturday Night Live is not afforded the opportunity uh, for penises. So I think that, you know, we do have a little bit more chance to push the envelope and, and without having to fill a uh, commercial break to a commercial break with a seven minute long sketch, we have a lot more uh, freer format to, to keep the comedy as tight and as focused as possible. So did you get you that? Just, where we have shorter shows and more dick. <laughs> yeah. And you just, you yeah. just keep dispelling, you keep dispelling those gay rumors, Rich Keith. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shorter shows, bigger dick. Come see a show, back me. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. Re- I just seem to recall. Was it was it the week Brian Krause was there? There was a little nudity that week. Yes, yes. That we we had full frontal nudity. Uh, uh, no, actually, was that Brian Krause? Who no, was yeah, Brian, Brian Krause, Pauline was topless. Or Pauline and Michelle Gregory were topless. That wasn't that show either. Or, or not, not that show, but it was one of the shows this year. And last year we had a full frontal male nudity sketch. Well, it was last year that we had it. Was, it was, um, it was uh, Kevin, Kevin Richardson. Richardson. Kevin Richardson, that was the show that we had full frontal nudity, uh, which Keith, Rich Keith won an award for. So, uh, actually, he won, he won an actor He wasn't award even the naked show. guy. No, no, no. Which is why he won the award. <laughs> <laughs> Was the you, uh, um, Jen, Rich, uh, do either of you have any any uh, memories of uh, you know just kind of losing uh, losing it on stage? You know, something happens, you start laughing, you forget your lines, you you know that kind of thing. Absolutely. 
Um, I've definitely had times where I've started laughing before, and you can't hide it that well because everyone is looking at you, but usually you can just get over it. And if the audience is with you, they'll think it's funny that you can't keep it together anyway. Right. And when I'm on stage with Jen, she she enjoys that. More so when we do improv together because there is more of a freedom to, to screw with one another, but she will definitely take any opportunity to call me out and make me look like an idiot on stage, and I find it very Very true. <laughs> Sorry. And, and she has lots of opportunities to do that, let's be honest. Exactly, many. <laughs> it's not that hard who, to do. Who in the company is known for losing it most often? Pauline Yasuda. Hands down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, I, I, actually, I, I actually have a term that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, where I say, Pauline, please shut your big fat laughing face. Uh, and and we've, we've, we've narrowed it down to actually its acronym, and she knows exactly what we're talking about because uh, she, she laughs uh, a lot. Uh, but yeah. she gets away with it because she's Asian, and the rest of us are white, and really there's nothing we can do about that. So. Exactly. Yeah. Have you tried, yeah. Travis, to do something about that? Well, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't reprimand her because then it's, you know, for the man yeah. and that yeah. gets ugly. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Do you, uh, you guys have been with the company a while. Do you ever think about, you know, moving on and, uh, you know, and uh, doing other things or is this a, you know, this is a pretty good gig. I mean, you're in LA, you're very visible, obviously. You couldn't I don't know, I'm just, I'm just waiting for a better offer. <laughs> We said exact opposite answers. I guess I was lying on mine. You could pay me enough to quit, but it would have to be a pretty fair amount. And actually, you're talking to two pretty new. Jen, Jen and Rich are actually pretty new with the, with the main company. I think, Jen, this is your first full year with the, with the main company, correct? Yeah. It's the last uh, night. Doing Acme this week. And, and Rich, last year was his first full year. Now, if you had asked that to, to Julie or, uh, <laughs> or Kevin Small, that might have been a different uh, a different answer. Okay. Because, you know, a lot longer. But uh, all right. Well, but so, it's a so really Jen, good gig. Is it? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great gig. It's a great it's gig. A of, it's really fun. We get to do a new show every week. Meet new celebrities that come in. It's awesome. Yeah. Have, have would you have the opportunity, uh, Travis? Maybe you want answers. I mean, if uh, you know, if someone saw Jen on stage tomorrow night. It's, and they're, you know, casting a movie, and they said, you know, you'd be perfect for this. You know, could Jen take, you know, six or eight weeks off and go make a movie and come back? Or would, would, oh, would you absolutely. Have to I mean, oh, no. I mean, that's the, that's the whole purpose of what we do. Look, Acme is, is, it is a transitional place. It is not meant hmm. to be somewhere, someplace where you spend your career. It is designed to be a launching pad for your career. Uh, we have a huge long list of people who have been members of the Acme main company that have gone on to do television and movies, uh, either as performers or writers. Um, and it happens all the time. I, I got cast. In, I, I just do the news. I got cast in something uh, just from doing the news uh, a few months back. Uh, you know, it, that, that is what we are designed to do. And, and, and in all honesty, when they get to that point, when they are, you know, get that TV show or get, get that gig, we, we hope that they're going to move on and become successful because, um, you know, Alex Borstein calls us the mothership. Uh, we want you to be out there saying you learned what you learned from Acme and that that's the place to go for other people who are trying to start their careers. All right. Well, uh, listen, uh, Jen and, and Rich, I want to thank you guys uh, for coming on. I'm going to bring Claudia uh, Dolph on in just a minute, uh, okay. but I'm going to I'm going to play another bit from uh, from Acme. Uh, but uh, thank you guys so much, uh, Rich. Nice to talk to you again, and uh, Jen, nice to uh, have you on. And uh, thank you. Hope we'll uh, have have you guys back again. Sounds right. good, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. All right, Bye. thank you guys. All right, and uh, Travis, if you'll. Uh, Stick with me for just a minute. No uh, problem. This is this is a sketch. Um, uh, I don't think I have the exact. T oh, I know. Yes, actually, this is called uh, "When You Wish Upon a Starlet," and the guest host that week was uh, uh, Taryn Southern. And I, well, I should have I should have given him credit while he was here. Uh, Rich Keith, who was just with us, is plays a kid with uh, cancer in this. Um, so uh, I thought this was very funny, and I wanted to share this. So right after this, we're going to uh, bring uh, Claudia on. Listen to this. 
<laughs> Jimmy, why don't you tell Terry in your own words what your wish is? Well, my dying wish is to spend the day with you like we're real life friends. You know, we could go to Santa Monica Pier and have snow cones, and then maybe, just maybe, I could get a kiss. I think I can do that. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> and then I want a motorboat. <laughs> you're friends. I'm sorry? Oh, it's okay. No, don't say you're sorry. You didn't give me cancer or <laughs> rip away my childhood. No, no, no. I know. I, uh, what I meant to say was, what do you, what do you mean? What you said? Uh, I, I want to use the last bit of remaining strength in my body to go... Ow, my cancer. <laughs> my cancer hurts. Okay, uh... Really? Okay? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. I'm almost finished. Oh, I got cancer on my hand. Why would you want to do this, sweetie? Why? Well, <laughs> well, you're, yeah, you know. My, uh, my reason is because when I go to heaven, I want practice. You see, your boots are like, they're like tiny clouds. And that's where heaven is. And I just want to practice flying to heaven face first so that I know I can get there. When I die of cancer. <laughs> so very soon. Jimmy, I would love to help you, sweetie, but no one asked me if I would be okay with this. <laughs> oh, okay. It's kind of like how nobody asked me. <laughs> Sure, yeah, sure. I'm afraid you didn't know these things. Okay. Well, you, you really don't have to do anything. Just undo a couple clips and stay. <laughs> and out of respect, and try not to giggle. Okay, you don't think this is creepy? Well, that's why uh, it's not my wish. We call it make a wish, not judge a wish. <laughs> You don't have to say no to me. You have to say no to Jimmy. <laughs> 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 okay, look, I really, really want to help you out with your wish. Yay! Yeah. Is there anything else that you can do? Anything else? You name it. I want to live. <laughs> <laughs> anything beside that, because it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> So that was Rich Keith as the kid. Um, joining us now is uh, Claudia Dolph. Claudia, welcome to Mr. Media. Hi, thank you. How are you doing? Sorry to uh, make you uh, wait through that. But I, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm used to Rich. Fine. Oh. <laughs> Claudia, how long have you been with the company? Uh, with Acme Main Company? Uh, yeah. I believe a year now. Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. How's that working out for you? <laughs> um, awesome. I love it. Yeah. And and uh, you and your listeners... Sh- oh. Go ahead. I was going to say, you and your listeners should know that when she says she's been with the main company for a year, that probably means that she spent two or three years getting to that point. So Claudia's probably yeah. been with us five years in total, but yeah. she's only been with the actual Saturday main night main cast for a year. Yeah. And before then, I was with Bravo Company, so... And what um, you know? What what prompted you to 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 join uh, Acme and kind of work your way up to the uh, the levels? And and you know why 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 did you stick with it? What was uh, what, you know what was um, going? 
I think I my whole adult acting career life, I kind of had a penchant for comedy and like the things that I would book, like the commercials and things I would book, it was all the auditions were all completely improvised and I would have like the room laughing and I had no idea why. And um my main background, I was a professional dancer for uh, 20 years. And so, you know, I was very much into, well, the technique and how you do things. And, you know, I studied to get where I was. So I was like, well, I need to find a place to figure out what the heck I'm doing. Because I, I wanted to understand why I was booking things or why, you know, things were funny, I guess. So I found acne. And uh, I... Uh, I had seen a couple of their sketch shows and I really, really liked it. And I always wanted to learn how to write sketch and write comedy. And that was the big, big, big thing for me. How, um, how has your, um, uh, approach to your career and what you're doing changed in the time you've been there? Um, I think I'm more focused just on what exactly it is I want to do instead of just being, Oh, I want to be an actor and just kind of, you know, Floating about all over the place, you know. There's a specific goal that I want, and you know, I get to hone that at Acme. And for people who would come to see, you know, for those who who come week to week and see the show, uh, what kind of roles are you most likely to be seen doing? Um, I am uh, what you would call, like, I guess, the straight person most of the time. I don't do a lot of character stuff because <laughs> I don't think I'm that all that good at it. <laughs> But um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a very good uh, reactor, we call reactor, straight person, you know, let somebody be crazy and I'll, I'll give you a funny look, sir, you know. And she's, she's also <laughs> smoking hot, so that helps. Yeah, uh, I have really nice boobs. The, the uh, guys clamor all the time to cast her <laughs> as their girlfriend. She spends a lot of time in bed with the actors, which I think yeah, is really I, interesting. Yeah, I have a lot of yeah. pretend sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of, which is a uh, shame. It's not very satisfying, but uh, oh, fine. This is so sad. Um, <laughs> um, I, I actually, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, having some pictures. I, I have a, a picture of uh, you and Kevin in bed. I think yeah. he's playing an older guy who gets younger. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit yeah. about that uh, about that sketch, if you would. Um, that sketch is basically, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's him, he's an older guy, and me, I'm playing uh, this girl that he's in bed with, and the joke is that uh, I want to do it again, I'm crazy about him, I'm, I'm hot for him, and he can't get it up, you know, like, it's, he's an old dude, so it's going to take him some time. And then That's basically he brings out all these, huh? <laughs> That's just a myth about old guys. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you of course being the younger woman, I'm sure you're very patient with him and understanding. And yeah, yeah. I mean, that was you know, it's nice when a when a when a sketch, uh, regardless of the content, can end sweetly or you know on a good note instead of oh you know she's yeah. gonna be bitchy <laughs> and lose the sketch and you know it's always nicer to. What she's forgetting to mention is he sneaks out of the room. And comes yeah, back I was to the gonna... toolbox, yeah. which, and he starts going through all the tools in his toolbox to try and figure what he might use to pretend is him because he cannot, uh, he cannot deliver uh, the second time uh, behind her back, uh, and that's what the majority of the sketch is. And then when she finds out, she's understanding and uh, and sweet and loving, all the all the qualities that that Claudia has in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Those are actually none of the qualities I have. So, yes, I, 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 <laughs> and, and Claudia, do you have any favorite moments from uh, any of the guest hosts this past year? Um, yeah, I have a lot of favorite moments. Uh, Tashina Arnold was an amazing person to work with. You know, um, I, I loved. Uh, there was a sketch that Lee Gansford wrote that I got to sing with her, which was awesome. Um, uh, cause she's also, you know, she's fabulous and she's so talented and, and, and it was just a good show in general, just her vibe, you know, she was put herself into it, you know, completely and was into every sketch, even if she didn't think it was that great. And, you know, she was just one of those people that you look up to and you go, wow, you know, 
she's awesome. And then uh, Tatiana Ali a few weeks ago was awesome because I got to dance with her and with my dance background. It was fun rehearsing and, you know, getting to hang out with her. She's super sweet and a uh, great performer. And then uh, Kevin Richardson, not a favorite moment, but no, it is a favorite moment because <laughs> we wrote a sketch called The Full Front and Rich, Keith and I, and we actually won an award, an Acme Award for it this year. But um, originally I'd written that sketch to try to get Kevin Richardson naked, but he didn't bite. <laughs> didn't work, huh? Right. Mm. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, when I was talking to Rich and, and Jen, I was asking them sort of a, a, about this, but have you had, in the year that you've been in the main company now, uh, ha- has anything come from uh, being in that? I mean, have you been approached after a show by someone who, you know, thought that you'd be good for another thing? Or, you know, have you had other opportunities because you've been in the main company? Yeah, absolutely. And and not even just at uh, – at, um, at Acme, people seeing me, I mean, it's all from people seeing me there, but I've also been able to, because I bartend as well, and, um, you know, I got to meet somebody who I'm meeting with in a couple of weeks, you know, she's a literary manager and things like that. It's just a great place to be like, you can see me here, you can see my stuff here, or um, you can look online and watch this or whatever. Um, So, yeah, it's actually been part of the reason, you know, I keep doing it and work so hard at it is because of that. And where, you know, where would you like to see your career in, you know, three to five years? What, what do you want to be doing? Oh, gosh. You know, I mean, like, ultimately, it'd, it'd be amazing to be a part of a, a show that, you know, you can do the same kind of thing, you know, write and perform. It's kind of, you know, those shows are very few and far between. But um, I love television, so that's that's the goal for me. Like, I love sitcoms. I love uh you know, even, you know, whatever comedies or, you know, like, that's like what I want to do. That's what I love to do. And, you know, Travis, I'm looking at the time and I know we're going to run out in about a minute or so. So I want to come back, come full circle, come back to you and ask you, what have we not touched on about Acme that you'd like people to know about after, you know, this is the 20th year again. That's why we're doing this. But what have we not touched on that you'd want to share with uh, people listening? Well, I guess the big thing, because the Groundlings are our main competition uh, in town, and I have a lot of people ask us what the difference between Acme and the Groundlings are. And I think both both organizations put on amazing shows. The Groundlings uh, put on a great show, and so do we. I think if you were to talk about the big difference in the organizations, is that, and I know this sounds really cheesy, and, and uh, but I think Acme is much more of a home to people. Uh, I think the actors that are with us are extremely loyal, and one of the reasons is is because we we help each other as much as we can within the business. We're not just all about putting on the best show; that's part of it. But we're also about the. Oh, did you just lose me? No, oh. I'm here. Oh, we're here. I heard something we're in my ear. Uh, but we're also about the human element, uh, and and that's really important to me. I know that's why. I bought the place five years ago. I know that's why Dan took the place from me. Uh, I know this because of the strong family of actors and community that we've built up. And I think that comes across on stage. Everybody enjoys themselves. Uh, everybody uh, feels comfortable being there. And, uh, you know, well, yeah. All right. Well, um, folks, listen, you can uh, – you can learn more about uh, the Acme Comedy Theater in Los Angeles online at uh, www.acmecomedy.com. You can, uh, and from there, you can uh, click on links for uh, to watch some of the videos from both the live show and uh, videos that they, they they prepare that are, are not from the live show. Um, and uh, don't forget uh, Acme this week, where every week there's a guest host. Tomorrow night, uh, April 11th, is a uh, um, Christina Perez from uh, the judge, Christina Perez from Christina's court. Uh, do we know, uh, Travis, uh, in the coming weeks, some of the other guest hosts that will be coming up? I know next week is Neil Flynn uh, from Scrubs. I was like the janitor on Scrubs. He's next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if I know the week after that yet. I, I think there's a question mark about that. I don't know who's the May 2nd. We're trying to get a big uh, a big person in for May second, uh, so I don't want to I don't want to say anybody's names or their possibilities and get myself in trouble. 
<laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, uh, uh, Travis, Claudia, and uh, before, uh, Dan Kane, uh, Julie Whitner, Kevin Small, and uh, Jen Parker. Uh, thank you all uh, very much for uh, joining us on Mr. Media today, and, and congratulations again to Acme Comedy Theater for 20, 20 years. Wow, two decades. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Take care. And, uh, nice to be on the show. Appreciate you guys' time. Good luck. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye-bye. And so, folks, for uh, more great uh, comedy interviews, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com, where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Robert Schimmel, Lisa Lampanelli, Bob Alper, Eugene Merman, The Whitest Kids You Know, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, MySpace, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. And you'll never miss a show if you subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes. Just search Mr. Media, I, Mr. Media Interviews in iTunes and uh, subscribe. It's free, and you'll never miss another show. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Come back and see us real soon, and thanks for listening.